Hey everybody! Today I'm going to say a few things on anarcho-capitalism, the state, and the corona. We are in the middle of what could be one of the biggest power grabs in American history. A precedent is being set, and whatever power the state gains over us with the corona crisis, it will never relinquish. All this is most certainly preparation as well as a trial run for their upcoming gun confiscation. The state always fails, and when it fails, the first thing it does is blame the people, saying, you didn't give us enough money, you didn't give us enough power. The state reflexively uses a crisis to do this. And the state is going to take advantage of a crisis, whether it's real or exaggerated. Also, we are taught from birth to hold the state to no standard. Let me give you an example. Imagine that Lincoln's bloody war really was a government program aimed at freeing slaves. They could have simply bought the slaves' freedom, but instead they wrought mass suffering and death and a tyranny that haunts us to this day. So how did it do as a government program? It's our inability to hold the state to any standard that allows it to expand in a time of crisis. We call the suppliers of goods who raise their prices during a time of crisis price gougers who are taking advantage of the situation. But actually, most of it is just the free market's way of rationing or conserving goods. We should really be holding the state to that high standard. Come here. No, come here. Sit. Good boy. So as some of you know, I'm an anarcho-capitalist and a listener of The Tom Woods Show. I haven't yet listened to Bob Murphy's interview with Tom on how a voluntarist world would handle the corona, but I did listen to his episode on animal welfare, and I found it inadequate. He should have pointed out how governmental regulation of meat has led to mass animal suffering, with no relative reduction in the price of meat. From a standpoint of anarcho-capitalism, the animal rights philosophy is part of the state psyop because its true function is to distract away from the real cause of man-made animal suffering. But with competing private regulators, things would be different. Unhappy animals are unhealthy animals. And since nobody wants to eat unhealthy animals, animal welfare would be built into the standards of the private regulators. Their stamp of quality would include animal welfare. And if zoning was also private, it would work hand in hand with the private regulation of meat to eliminate animal suffering. On top of that, the state monopoly on the regulation of meat has led to the persecution of small farmers. So I'm going to listen to Bob Murphy's interview on the corona later today, and what I'm going to be listening for is if he admits that an anarcho-capitalist world would segregate into highly discriminatory, culturally homogenous societies with all the communities living in harmony by using free trade. Most of what the government does is a perversion of what would have happened if land was private. And given that in a libertarian society, we would have retained our God-given right to discriminate, we would have ways to quarantine without the loss of liberty or governmental opportunists taking advantage. 
But I'm concerned that Bob Murphy won't bring up the discriminatory nature of volunteerism in the interview. Because lately, Tom Woods has been chumming with anti-white ethnic cleansers such as Jacob Hornberger and Brian Kaplan. Let me give you an example to illustrate Hornberger's understanding of a world of private property. Let's say that all gay Cubans decided to get together in a volunteerist community. We'd all be trying to get in there. And I were to knock at their gates and ask to be let in. They'd say, <laughs> no, Noxie, you're not gay and you're not Cuban. But I'd answer, um, I have uh, short hair and I'm part Spanish. And they still say, no, Noxy, no entrada. In Hornberger's shallow view of a world of private property, I'd still be able to force myself in just by simply buying a piece of property from one of the inhabitants. Hornberger's understanding of a free world makes no sense. Private zoning and private roads would protect from invasions of any kind. So again, I'm going to be listening to see how far Tom and Bob go in admitting that an anarcho-capitalist world is a highly discriminatory one, and that the same forces that would protect a territory from being invaded by sick people would also protect a people from ethnic invasion. And finally, before I end the video, I just want to recommend that everybody watch a video by Dr. Richard Chang on how to take vitamin C to prevent and treat the coronavirus. He gives instructions on how to do it in his video, and I'll leave a link in the comment section. Anyways, that's it. So, um, I'll talk to you later.